Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to 3D Collisions and Game Maker. So last time, we worked out 3D overlap tests between capsules and some of the other basic shapes, and today we are going to be working out overlap tests between capsules and all the other shapes that I didn't get to yet. And this will hopefully be the end of capsules, and we can move on from there. Um, today we're going to be doing capsules and triangles, capsules and line segments, and capsules and rays. And I uh, believe in the last video I said that capsules and triangles were going to be a bit of a pain in the neck. And then I looked at the like code that I'd written in my test project, and it's actually not going to be that bad. So we're going to start off with capsules and triangles, and we're going to um, we're going to take advantage of a bunch of the code that we've written in the past, uh, so that we um, we don't have to do a lot of the annoying math ourselves all over again. And we're going to start out by figuring out the nearest point on the triangle to the start and the end point of the capsule. And if the nearest point on the triangle to either of the capsule's end caps or the line segment is less than the radius, then there's a collision. And we understand that. That's kind of the basis of how a bunch of the other collision tests up there have worked. Uh, so first, I'll say of our nearest point uh, start is going to be triangle dot nearest point, and we're going to get that to self dot line dot start. And second of our nearest, nearest uh, point finish is going to be uh, triangle dot nearest. Uh, you can probably figure where this is going, self dot line dot finish. Uh, we're going to figure out the point on the capsules uh, start and the end points, the nearest point uh, to the, um, on the line, on the central line to these two points. And then if that distance, if either of those distances, because there are going to be two of them, um, if either of the distances are going to be less than the capsule's radius, uh, then we can, um, we can detect a collision. And uh, let's say, I'm going to reorganize this code in a minute. Um, var capsule line nearest point start. This is a very long variable name. Uh, this is going to be self.line.nearest point to the uh, nearest point on the triangle of our capsule line nearest point end is going to be the nearest point on our line to the triangle, to the triangle's nearest point, uh, to the finish. And then if capsule's nearest point to the start is, is closer than, I'm going to want distance to, uh, nearest point start, uh, then self.radius, we can return true. And if capsule.nearest point finish, the distance to that point on this line is uh, less than or equal to the capsule's radius, we're also going to return true, else return false. And that should be all we need for triangles. You can um, rearrange this code a little bit so that you don't have to do some extra math calculations if you don't need them. Uh, for example, dealing with all these start points first, um, like this, and then calculating the, the end point if you have to. That'll cut out a little bit of math. And this should work for capsules versus triangles in uh, pretty much all cases. So that's a capsule, that is a triangle. Uh, we have ourselves an overlap over here. Um, if I were to move the capsule out, or in, or out, or around, uh, where am I? Or up or down? It's really hard to, really hard to put the camera where I want it all of a sudden. Uh, shapes overlap, shapes no longer overlap, uh, if we move you in or out. And this should work with, uh, with longer capsules too, which, um, this is a pretty long capsule, which might not necessarily have the triangle intersecting either of the end caps. Uh, like this, and it's still working there. All right. Uh, which direction is left, right, up, down, and all that? Yeah. Moving you, moving you all over the place. I really want to try and get the capsule like in the in the middle of the triangle, like that, and and show that that's working. Good. So that's capsules and triangles. Uh, that was the uh, the easy part. And I'm sort of dreading what's coming up next because it is going to be capsules and raycasts. Um, I'm just going to say right now that finding code 
that I could use for capsules and raycasts was the actual worst. Figuring out a capsule raycast itself is not that bad, but figuring out exactly where on the capsule the raycast hits and where the, uh, what the collision normal of the hit location is, that was an utter nightmare. And I spent a lot of time looking for, looking for collision code on the internet. Um, to figure out the hit information for capsule raycast. I went and looked inside places such as the uh, the source code for the bullet collision system, like the actual C++ source code. Um, that was a nightmare to follow. Uh, that system is absolutely huge. Um, there are a couple other uh, 3D collision systems written in C++, and I'll have links to them in the video description if you want to uh, learn more, if you want to read more for your own research purposes or anything. I tried, I tried looking at the Snitter's code for uh, capsule raycasts, and... Um, Seeing if, uh, seeing if he could enlighten me, but uh, his capsule raycast code was actually even weirder, and it appears to be of his own invention, which is quite cool, but was not of any help to me. And it works, but, like, how? And um, I eventually did find something uh, somewhere on the internet, and I will, um... It's gonna be a lot of math words. You're gonna hear a lot of math words just falling out of my mouth for the next 10 minutes or so. But by the time we're finished with this, we should have acceptable capsule raycasts, and we should be able to, um to get the hit information from it. So, first I am going to figure out the capsule direction. Um, capsule dir is gonna be self.line.finish.sub, uh, self.line.start. We've seen this a million times. This is getting the direction that a line segment is traveling. Uh, oftentimes, if you want to turn a line segment into a ray, uh, you would do something like this. Uh, var, I'm gonna say uh, relative, uh, relative ray origin is going to be the incoming ray dot origin dot sub uh, self dot line dot start. So if we're changing the uh, the ray's position in space to a um, a coordinate system where the capsule's uh, starting point is the uh, the origin, uh, this is its its new position. This is the ray the ray's relative origin to the capsule. Yeah. Up next, and um, try not to laugh, but this is just. And again, I'll have the um. I'll have the, the pages on the internet where I found this in the video description if you want to see it for yourself. But I'm going to save our B-A-B-A, -A, uh, Baba is you apparently, capsule um, dir dot dot against the capsule direction. And that's going to be basically the magnitude squared. Uh, people who write 3D collision systems like to use magnitude squared because it makes the math easy and it's slightly uh, cheaper to compute than a square root. Um, next var bard. B A R D is going to be capsule dir dot dot ray dot direction. So we're going to take the dot product of the capsule's direction against the ray's direction. Uh, that's going to tell us how similar these two vectors are, um, sort of, because the capsule's direction is not necessarily normalized while the ray's direction is. Um, next, var B A O A is going to be uh, capsule direction dot dot relative. Uh, ray origin. Fourth, uh, var r doa is going to be ray dot direction dot dot product against relative ray origin. And uh, the last of the funny names, var oaoa, I don't even know how to pronounce that, is going to be relative uh, ray origin dot dot against itself. So again, the magnitude squared of the relative ray origin. And uh, because mathematicians love their one-letter variable names. Next is coming up a set of one-letter variable names. Uh, I'm going to say A is going to be equal to Baba minus the square of Bard. And I literally typed out the square of Bard, didn't I? Uh, you could use the square function. You could also use the uh, straight-up multiplication. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is GML. Next, uh, B is going to be Baba uh, times R D O A uh, minus... Uh, Bawa, I guess, B-A-O-A, -A, um, times Bard. Var C is going to be bar, uh, Baba uh, times A-O-A-O -A -O, uh, minus um, B-A-O-A -A times B-A-O-A. -A. Uh, again, you could use the square function if you want. Um, let's see, minus uh, self dot radius. I don't need parentheses, do I? Because multiplication has priority. Uh, times the self dot radius times Baba, and var h is going to be uh, b times b minus a times c. And uh, part of this, 
involves uh, basically solving the quadratic equation, uh, which you may remember from from uh, pre-algebra in, in school. And it's got a lot of parts of it like shuffled around, but you may remember things, uh, you, may, you may think that certain bits of code such as this uh, might begin to look familiar if you've ever had to solve the quadratic equation in school, which I'm guessing most of you probably have and are trying to suppress those memories. Um, anyway, once the, initial, uh, once the initial variables are set up, we can start getting into actual like geometry. I'm gonna say if h is greater than zero, we're going to save our t is going to be equal to the uh, open parentheses minus b uh, minus the square root of h. Hey. And that is going to be divided by a. Uh, make sure the parentheses are in the right place. Again, uh, this looks quite a bit like solving the uh, the quadratic equation. Also, uh, if h is if h is less than or equal to zero, then the ray is just not pointing in the direction of the um of the capsule, and we can just like completely skip all these calculations. Uh, because you don't need to do them because the ray is not pointing in the direction of the capsule. Um, anyway, uh, next I'm going to save our... And the code that I found online for capsule ray cast, this was just y uh, equals baoa um, plus t times bard. But GameMaker will not let us declare a local variable called y because that's a built-in instance variable. It's annoying, I know. Uh, so instead I think I'm going to go and um, just turn that into the other kind of y. Because uh, while I can while I can do a bunch of the other math and while I can reason through it if I have to, um, capsule raycast code just completely defeats me. So uh, we're going to first uh, raycast into the body of the um, of the capsule, and it really doesn't matter if you do this or the next bit of code first. Uh, we're going to raycast into the body, the cylinder of the capsule, and then we are going to raycast into the end caps of the capsule to see if a collision is is hit. Um, I'm going to say if uh, y is greater than zero and uh, y is less than baba. Um, we can save our contact point is going to be equal to ray.origin.add, uh, ray.direction.mol uh, against t. And is that the correct number of parentheses? It is one too many. Um, leave that semicolon there, thank you very much. Uh, we can save our nearest inner point is going to be self.line.nearest point to the contact point to the contact point. Uh, we can save our contact normal is going to be contact point dot sub subtract. It's just sub, it's not subtract. Uh, nearest inner point, inner point like that. And we're going to normalize that. And that's going to be our collision normal. And uh, that is the contact point, the nearest inner point, which is used to calculate the collision uh, normal. And we can say, uh, we're going to want to put that information in the hit info struct, hit info.update with uh, t. That's going to be the distance to the, to the point of contact. Uh, we're going to pass in the object as self, our, our capsule. Uh, the contact point is going to be contact point, and the contact normal is going to be contact normal. And we can return true, because a collision has been detected there. So this is raycasting into the cylinder. Uh, next, we are going to want to raycast into the end caps. We are going to do a little bit of extra work here. I guess it does make sense to do this first, because it's, um, it's less math. And you generally want to do the less expensive math. Um, sooner if you can. And also because the, the collision spheres are like inside the cylinder, but whatever. Anyway, we can say var OC is going to be um, y is less than or equal to zero. This is going to be a condition, a conditional operator. Um, if y is less than or equal to zero, we're going to say relative ray origin is going to be our OC position. Uh, otherwise, ray.origin.subtract self.line.finish. Uh, new misspelling of the word line just dropped. Um, we're going to update our b value because this is going to be, um, we're going to be looking at something else. Uh, b is going to be set equal to ray dot direction dot um, dot against our OC value. Uh, C is going to be also updated to uh, OC dot dot um, OC minus the uh, square of radius, so radius times self dot radius. Um, 
this is occurring to me now. Would it be like an argument in favor of using the square function here instead of saying radius times radius would be like, it reads better. It just, it reads better. And um, generally speaking, if it's all the same, uh, code should, could, should sort of look like it, it does what it says it does. I guess that's a reason for doing using the square function here. I'm not gonna go back and change it now. Maybe at the end of the video after I commit it to GitHub. Anyway, h can be set to the square of b minus, minus c. And now if h is uh, greater than zero, again, uh, we can say var, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this f. Should I call this like t? Should I recycle the t variable because it's doing the same thing as the t variable up here is? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, we can say t is going to be equal to negative b minus the square root of h. Uh, we're going to start figuring out our contact point. That is going to be um, contact point is going to set equal to ray dot origin dot add uh, ray dot direction dot mol by uh, t. Var nearest inner point is going to be uh, self dot line dot nearest point like this uh, to the contact point. Uh, look familiar. Uh, var contact normal is going to be equal to contact point dot subtract. Uh, we're going to subtract nearest inner point and normalize that. That is going to be our contact normal. And we can say hit info dot update uh, t, which is how how far away the point of contact is. Um, the, the collision object is ourself. Um, the contact point is going to be the contact point, and the contact normal is going to be itself. Uh, return true. And now, if none of that, if none of that runs, then the raycast does not hit the uh, the uh, capsule at all. We can return false. And now I really hope I got that in the first try because my mind is just like spinning right now. Um, we have like half of it. Okay. We have a raycast working on like one, one half. Oh, you know what? And I will certainly have text on the screen ye yelling at myself when I do this earlier, but um, this should be a square root there. Uh, thank you, quadratic equation. Once again, if you remember solving that in a uh, middle school or whatever, I've also gone and changed all the like values times themselves to use the square function. It's going to perform the same one way or the other, but it, I think it reads better um, now that I said that out loud. Uh, and again, code should do what it looks like it does. So um, it's, it's nice if, if you use the square function in cases like this, uh, just to make the code that much uh, less ugly and, and mathy than, than it otherwise would be. But now if I run the game, uh, we are going to have a cylinder. We are going to have a ray cast into the cylinder, into the, the capsule. And we are going to have the point of contact uh, at the mouse cursor. We are going to have the collision normal at the point of contact uh, being whatever it, it, being calculated correctly, whatever it should be. Um, we are going to have the, uh, the normal pointing out of either the end caps or the body of the cylinder in the correct direction. And we can, we can like move that up and down and it's still going to work. Um, that is not a raycast hit, that is a point, uh, which is not being used in this collision detection. You can't, you can't raycast into points. Uh, that doesn't make sense. I suppose you could figure out if the point lies on the ray, but how useful is that in games, generally speaking? So, uh, that is going to be, uh, a commit that I should have made for check triangle. Okay, that it was the nightmare that is capsules versus raycast. Lastly, we have uh, the icing on the cake. Uh, this is going to be capsules versus line segments. And uh, this is actually going to be a very simple matter of saying var closest uh, line is going to be self.line.nearest connection to line. Uh, as, we've been, as we've been doing, um, that is not nearest. That is nearest. Uh, we're going to check the nearest connection from the capsules line to the incoming line, and if um, the uh, closest line dot length 
is uh, less than or I suppose equal to because we've been doing less than or equal to in the series uh, self dot radius. Um, we can detect a collision. We can simply return this expression, and that is going to be our capsules versus lines. And my line segment test is really um, not very good. Uh, what is line? N on the keyboard. All right, I misspelled length. L e n g t h. Uh, but I will I will test out moving the capsules around and seeing if we can detect a collision. Uh, we can if I move the capsule through the line, if I move the capsule up or down, like this. Um, if I were to move the capsule left or right, uh, we should be able to uh, precisely have the capsule uh, stop detecting collision with the line. And we're gonna we're gonna take a moment to move that off the end. This is like removing a kebab from an extremely long skewer or marshmallow or something. And that is where the collision starts and ends. It would be the same thing on the other side. Uh, that is capsules versus lines. All right. So when I said that this video was going to contain collision checks that were a lot less pretty than uh, the last video, that kind of wasn't true. And um, triangles and, and lines ended up being not that bad, as I remembered. The, uh, the bulk of this would have been spent in the Raycast. All right. So uh, I'm going to end this off here. This is it for capsules. This is a, this is really it for all the basic primitive shapes um, for uh, for 3D collisions in Game Maker. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. This is all going to be again. I forgot to create myself a new branch for uh, for this one. I'll fix that later. Um, this is a fairly fairly capable 3D collision system. It is not completely optimized. Um, as I said, I will get to videos on making this a little bit more nice and optimized later on. This is it for the basic 3D collision primitives that I'm going to be doing. Um, other collision shapes exist. As I said, I will have resources to some other things in the video description if you want to poke around um, poke around with other collision shapes and overlap tests yourself. But I'm not going to be making videos on any. Uh, next, I'm probably going to be dealing with like rotated and transformed shapes and particularly collision meshes. Um, we're going to start to do a little bit more with matrices. Uh, we have ourselves a matrix class, a matrix class in this project, but we're not doing a ton of things with it right now. Um, but later on, we're going to start getting to multiplying and inverting and doing whatever matrix things with them um, when it comes to figuring out collisions with transformed shapes. For performance reasons, I would obviously recommend that you do not do excessive amounts of um, collision checks versus transformed uh, triangle meshes, but sometimes you just want to and I'll be covering those all the same. And I, uh, after that, I have thrown out some, um, some other 3D collision subjects that uh, some people may be interested in, such as 3D collisions versus terrain and ways that you can um, make that go a little bit faster other than checking a bunch of triangles um, and other collision hierarchies uh, other than octrees, which you might be interested in using. So uh, look forward to that. And then we'll probably be done with 3D collisions in Game Maker. So, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I like doing weird things in Game Maker such as this. If you're interested in any of that, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Harold Guidry, Kiexi, Manta Ray, Sindra Larson, Square Crow, The Oz, Vitro V, and Zengimans for supporting these videos. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fund.